Right. Okay. News events. Now, uh, something interesting happened uh, during the week. And uh, after getting reports, understanding it, I am uh, presenting it to you today. And that is the Powell's uh, signaling a delay in the red card. So this is something that I have mentioned uh, already uh, in the report, you know. Uh, on Monday itself, I say it's very crucial to see what this central, the head of these central banks, what are they talking about to, to give you an idea of the next financial landscape. Because then the remember I mentioned about Powell, he has been saying that you know January, February, those are speed bumps. Is he going to use the same narrative? Uh, narrative uh, do f the same reasons again and say this is a speed bump they don't think uh, you know that they should react to it and all these kind of things well this time he has changed his uh, the tune you know so today we are going to look into uh, you know what was mentioned and what does it mean to the US dollars what does it mean to the S&P 500 the US stock market in general okay so at the recent Washington forum held at the Wilson Center, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell indicated a strategic pivot in monetary policy, suggesting that the Federal Reserve will delay potential interest rate cuts longer than initially expected. This revision follows three consecutive months of unexpectedly high inflation readings. Chair Powell emphasized that it might take additional time for the Federal Reserve to confidently project that inflation will stabilize at a target rate of 2%, thus delaying any reductions in borrowing costs. Now, his comments marks a departure from previous communications, highlighting a cautious approach towards rate cut. This cautious stance suggests that any potential interest rate reductions in 2024 are likely to occur later in the year, if at all. Okay? Now, this year... Uh, which was anticipated to see U.S. inflation decreasing 2%, has instead experienced setbacks, uh, primarily, primarily due to persistent housing shortages. Uh, this is one of the key issues that is facing. So how house cost rates makes up approximately one-third of the CPI have remained stubbornly high. And additionally, chair power early hints at rate cuts may have prematurely Built, uh, built by the financial markets, thereby stimulating economic activity more than intended because they have been giving this uh, dot plots, you know, in starting from December itself. I say trade rate cuts this year. This uh, was in a way created a lot of that hype there. Okay. So the volatile energy sector, particularly oil prices, has also contributed to economic uncertainty with prices rising in the first quarter and geopolitical tensions in the Middle East escalating further uh, increases. You know, if, if there is geopolitical tensions in the Middle East escalating further increases could be imminent and that could add more uh, stress in, you know, to the Fed, you know, give more inflation, you know, inflationary pressure towards it. Now, contrary to expectations of weakening the U.S. economy has demonstrated remarkable resilience so far. Much saw so a significant surge in employment with over 300,000 jobs added, the highest in nearly a year, and retail sales have also surpassed forecasts. This economic vigor is accompanied by renewed inflation pressures evident in 2024. Okay? So these are the causes. Number one is the housing. Number two... Uh, Powell's statement, you know, the general consensus, the feeling that's giving the market that added to it, oil prices due to political tensions and then also the jobs as well, right? Now, despite earlier projections by Federal Reserve policymakers of three uh, rate cuts this year, market sentiments so far have adjusted to one to two rate cuts for this year, one to two. Now, regarding uh, European monetary policy, ING notes a June discount of 22 basis points, while markets pricing in a total of 78 basis points uh, of easing for the year. So this is from the European uh, monetary policy. Yeah? So, so you must remember this because then you will know how to deal when you're trading with the Euro, uh, Euro 
uh, versus the US dollar. Nevertheless, the baseline expectation remains at three rate cuts for the ECB. And ECB officials, including Ren and Lagarde, have identified geopolitical risks as and oil prices as critical factors influencing upcoming decisions. So they still remain three rate cuts for a year, whereas for the the um for uh, the you the dollar dollar is right now two to one. So this is a very important thing. And also take note that the interest rate for the US is much higher than the Euro as well. Okay. So what does this mean? As the landscape involves, several factors could influence the trajectory of US and European monetary policies by June. There's still much more to see by June. Okay. But However, if things stay status quo, everything stays the same. For the moment, the US dollar may continue to strengthen against the euro and other major currencies as well. Okay. And lastly, the US stock market, however, momentarily would come down in the process. Because if they delay rate, you know, rate cuts, this means the market would have to suffer higher interest rates for the time being and uh, you would still see housing everything will be expensive because uh, those that want to buy new houses they would not uh, you know they would think again and see and those that already have houses wouldn't want to and already enjoying the lower rates since they were paying last time wouldn't want to get themselves burdened with high interest rates at the current moment while waiting okay so with that limited uh, what you call supply over there, you know, people are not buying uh, new houses. So with that limited supply, rent can continue to be high. That's why shelters also can be high. You know, shelter costs and everything can be high. So this is one of the crucial things that US have to face for the time being. So, but it's a good thing because we have been waiting for that catalyst and it's already happening right now. I said the US stock market cannot continue to move up uh, for the, you know, with this S&P 500 cannot just keep on going up and up and up. It doesn't, it needs to find a point where it has to uh, retrace. So like I said, in year 2024, based on the historical movements, there will be three movements uh, of, uh, of at least 5% correction in the stock market. This is a correction. This is not a crash in the stock market. So there's like 5%, 5% versus 5%. Now, out of that 5%, 3 5%, one of them will be a 10% correction. So, this is something expected and this is something normal. Okay? So, let's wait for it. Opportunities are abundant. Uh, once the correction comes to a point where I feel comfortable, then we will be shifting our focus to look into stocks that have already corrected significantly and then those, we, those that have missed some of the very nice tech stocks, right? This is one of the good times to replenish uh, or buy in into those stocks, okay? So with that, um, that's the end of the fundamental report for today. Let's move on to the charts.